Jan Irvin, and I know a lot of the folks here in the office are uh, big uh, admirers of his work. And we post some of his uh, reports up at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Uh, and uh, here's one, TV, well, uh, here's an article that breaks down a lot of what he talks about. TV is a psychosocial weapon. And this, this report goes through uh, the admitted government studies where they admit they're putting you uh, into a trance. And uh, also the LVX system, ceiling lights, encoded internet data, turns out uh, that that's also designed to, to manipulate uh, the, the human brain. You know, that's how they hypnotize you, use a flashing light. Um, Project MK Ultra, all of it. We're going to talk about this with uh, Juan Irvin, uh, right? Uh, <laughs> Jan. Uh, Jan Ir uh, Irvin. Uh, I'm a little brain dead today, my friend. How about I call you Bob? <laughs> Bob uh, 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 Irvin. <laughs> there you go. Uh, but, but you're joining us via uh, 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 video Skype, Jan. Uh, now you're Don Juan or Carl Young. Uh, uh, there you go. Uh, 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 describe yourself for people, because you've got a long bio. How would you like to describe yourself? Well, I'm an author. I've written a couple of books on uh, entheogens and religion. I run a podcast. I am the uh, curator for the official John Allegro website. He was a, a Dead Sea Scrolls scholar whose research was suppressed. I also run TriviumEducation.com and uh, Helping People, which is a website dedicated to teaching people the trivium, which is a systematic method for driving certainty to cut through the mind control system so that people can see how everything works. Which You're is talking really about what reality like testing. You're talking about reality testing. Right, yeah, and that's really what I would like uh, to go into t to, to today with you, Alex, is the Trivium method and how it's used in media against us uh, to control the population. Well, Bob, uh, Irvin, you've got the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my name is now uh, 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 Bill Jones, so... Uh, I was thinking, uh, I was thinking Christy. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right, let me, let me start off by asking you a question, Alex. What, what happens when you get a virus on your computer? Well, you generally respond by uh, going and... Um, uh, well, let me, let me put it this way. What happens to the way the computer functions when you get a virus? It stops functioning correctly because disinformation has been added in uh, that uh, destroys its proper functioning. And that's what happens when we bring in false... Uh, systems, false ideas uh, into, into our, our minds. Brains. Yeah, it's exactly right. And there is an ancient system that was developed primarily by Pythagoras and Aristotle called the Trivium and Quadrivium. It composes the seven liberal arts. And what they've done is since the 1850s, the Trivium has been systematically removed from our education system. And Many of us will remember your f former co-host, uh, Jason Burmas, and uh, his partner, Dylan Avery, when they were on Democracy Now! with Amy Goodman and against Popular Mechanics. And if you go through that, there was a, a, a line of communication that fell through there that Jason and Dylan could have picked up on that Popular Mechanics was primarily using against them. They fell into a lot of the traps themselves. But what I want to do today is to show people basically how to install a mental antivirus system into their minds so that they can spot how this stuff is being used against them, spot the logical fallacies, and then keep the conversation uh, directed specifically towards the topic in discussion. Now, for instance, uh, with 911, we can make our, you know, how can we make our arguments as solid as possible against attack? And uh, let me just move my camera here. Sorry if that's going crazy. No, Bob, there. please do. <laughs> and uh, so, with the 911 stuff, what we need to do is go back and we need to analyze our grammar before we come to our logical conclusions. What's happening to the quote unquote truth movement is most of us are typically putting our, our logic before our grammar. We're putting our conclusions before we have sufficient data to back them up. And this is what the trivium is about. The trivium specifically is grammar, logic, and rhetoric, and it's always in that order. Now, not using the trivium is like put, or, or putting logic before grammar is like trying 
trying to eat your food at a restaurant before you've seen the menu or ordered, or it's like trying to put a car together before you know what the parts are. Grammar is the parts. Grammar is the research. Like right now, I'm, I'm holding up a stack of, of papers from the Council on Foreign Relations that I got directly from the Council on Foreign Relations archives, and this is the grammar that I've been doing or the research that I've been doing on the Council on Foreign Relations and specific functions that, that they're using or, or that they're manipulating. And the by public. the way, uh, the social engineers uh, are, are masters at their, at their core writings generally have three meanings. And uh, they have meetings for the general dumbed-down public. They have meetings for the outer councils in their groups. And then they have the inner meetings. And when you know how to read it, it's all hidden there in plain view. An example of that is Gary Hart wrote a letter to Iran, published it in the Huffington Post, saying, we stage terror attacks, we'll do it again, just like 9-11, Gulf of Tonkin. You better do what we say. But he wrote it. It thinly veiled, so when he was then confronted about it, he first lied and said, I never wrote that letter. Then when he was confronted with the letter, he went ahead and admitted, okay, that is what I said. But it's almost like if you can't communicate with them and cut right to the chase with them, they will lie to you. But they have these weird rules that once you actually call them on it, a lot of times they'll be honest. It, 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 it's a cult. Right. And, well, you know, see, what we need to do, Alex, is we need to – to defeat our enemy, we have to be able to break their ability to control us. And in order to do that, we have to take control basically of our own minds. And Leo Tolstoy once said that the printing press was a mighty engine for disseminating ignorance. And in other words, what I'm getting at is that literacy in and of itself is a form of slavery until a systematic form of critical thinking is, pr is, is practiced by the reader. Just being able to read, just having literacy is not a way for people to learn and to keep from being controlled. That's how they control people. The trick is learning a systematic method for thinking to filter through the information that's coming in via the five senses so that we're, we're, we don't get a virus and spread that virus virus to others as false right. information. Let me give you an example of a virus and see if you agree and then give uh, the listeners a few other examples of this. When Obama comes out and says, this is not a war in Libya, this is peace, uh, and it seems outrageous uh, to you know have them do that, or when the TSA sticks their hands down your pants or puts you in a microwave oven and says this is safety, they mean to destroy logic. They mean to condition you to accept their false reality and they're waging war against reality. They live in reality, the social engineers, but they want us living in uh, literally this matrix where they have implanted all this disinformation uh, into our brains. And so uh, I would attack 9-11 and the fraud by saying governments have done this before. This is why well, governments do it. And then I would go through the impossibilities in the official story. I would agree with that to, to an extent, but the first thing that we have to do, Alex, especially with regarding 911, is we have to gather all of our data first and make sure that all of, all of our data is gathered. Data and, or grammar is also known as knowledge under the trivium, okay? And then logic is uh, understanding. So what we do first is we gather our data first, we remove the contradictions from that data, which becomes logic, before we express that information to others, which is rhetoric or wisdom. Uh, Edward Bernays, to quote him real quick, said that the conscious and intelligent manipulation of the organized habits and opinions of the masses is an important element in, dem in a democratic society. Those who manipulate this un seen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government which is the true ruling power of our country. We are governed, our minds molded, our tastes formed, our ideas suggested largely by men we have never heard of. This is a logical result of the way in which our democratic society is organized. In almost every act of our daily lives, whether in the sphere of politics or business, in our social conduct or ethical thinking, we are dominated by the relatively small number of persons who understand the mental processes and social patterns of the masses. It is they who pull the wires which control the public mind. And that's from the very first paragraph of, of propaganda. chapter one. From Edward Bernays book, Propaganda, that's correct. And so, you know, what we're looking at is these elites use sophism, they use the trivium against us. And the way to 
fight the trivium being used against us is to learn the trivium. See, what they've done is they've removed the classical seven liberal arts from our education. The word liberal in and of itself, Alex, comes from the Latin liber, which means book. And in ancient Roman times, the slaves were not allowed to study the seven liberal arts of the... Of yeah, the liberal uh, 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 means learned or books. Right. And well, exactly. And and so the the people once they were once you became freed from slavery under Roman in Roman times, the first thing you did was undertook a, a study of the trivium and quadrivium. Okay. So this is why book or liber and liberty are synonymous. Freedom means book. Okay. So people have to understand that their freedom is in the books. It's in the trivium and the quadrivium. Again, the trivium is grammar, logic, and rhetoric, always in that order. And if they, if you're given it, if it's given to you out of order, if logic is put first, for instance, that in and of itself is a system of mind control. And that's why we see people who will seriously, uh, you, know, you say, I don't want government run health care. Uh, and they say you don't like black people, and for us, well, that's that's what they're doing. Is that's a red herring right there? They they're div diverting the subject. No, matter. I know, but for those of us that that can you know, have basic common sense and, and a historical understanding, we see it as an asinine, uh, actual form of racism, creating division. But we don't understand. They're hitting an audience that is so confused that they just believe the symbol of the spoken word makes it so, and so they're primed to accept lies and have. No discrimination to be able to uh, uh, calculate uh, information. I would agree with that, but let's put aside what would what we would generally consider a common idea of of uh, of critical thinking. Okay, because see, to the elites, unless you have studied the trivium and quadrivium, and you understand and can identify logical fallacies, both formal and form informal, they don't consider that you have any system of critical thinking. In fact, those who don't have the trivium are very easily mind controlled. So what we've been doing is we've been putting this information out to people to empower them. So it's basically like taking the red pill in the matrix. Once you have the trivium, you can see all of the logical fallacies that, uh, that, that they use against you. And in fact, I launched a, a website recently called popupfallacies.com. And I, <clears throat> uh, the second video that I put up there was Obama's uh, The Death of Osama Bin Laden video. And Obama has a lie per minute rating of 9.5 lies per minute. And when you can actually see the fallacies coming at you during these presidential political speeches, et cetera, you can, you can begin to realize how to apply this information right away. So what we have to do, Alex, we have to get people to understand the logical fallacies on a global basis right away. Well, here's a, here's a logical this, this fallacy. This is the way to stop these people. Uh, absolutely. But here's a logical fallacy. Um, I mean, on the face of it, if government is almost always lying or spinning, why do we then believe the next thing they tell us? And why do they use this mind control term of conspiracy theorist when we don't believe people that are certified liars? That right there is a blatant... Well, a conspiracy theorist, labeling somebody a conspiracy theorist is an ad hominem. Yes. It's, it's to get them to stop focusing on what you're saying, Alex, and to say, oh, ha, 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 Alex is a conspiracy theorist. It's an appeal to ridicule, right? So instead of saying that instead of dealing and then with they the have the appeal to authority and then they have the right. appeal to authority well you can use that too but see you know an appeal to authority is any appeal when you're using an expert to solidify a point but you know what you have to show that that expert is an authority and that their integrity is not under question but an appeal to ridicule let's say that they are just say oh alex jones is a conspiracy theorist what that is, is it's an ad hominem attack or an attack on the man. They're not dealing with the specific information that you're dealing with or presenting, but it's also an appeal to ridicule, which is basically like saying, Alex Jones is wrong because ha ha ha. You there? Uh, yes, I am, uh, uh, Mr. Irvin. Say that again. I was saying that an appeal to ridicule is like saying Alex Jones is wrong because ha ha ha. Yes.
Okay, and and so these are the logical fallacies, and there's about 22 of the most common logical fallacies. There's probably a couple hundred in total. If people want to go to the triviumeducation.com website, once again, trivium t r i v i u m education.com, uh, they can begin their study of the trivium and this information right there on the website. And if also if people want to get involved in in uh, study groups, I recommend that they go to uh, Richard Andrew Groves tragedyandhope.com website, which is obviously named after Professor Carol Quigley's book. Uh, so, you know, what we're trying to do is create a meme of giving this information back to people, the skills of critical thinking, the classical seven liberal arts, because you cannot be free unless you have these tools. In fact, the, the, the American rebellion against England on the Canada Free Press website, this author, Kelly, I forget her last name, the other day uh, for 4th of July, she published an article right on this website that said that the American Revolution was based around the trivium. And people knowing how to think, knowing how to slice through these lies and get to the truth, either that or to know what needs more research to derive at that truth, it is essential. So... <laughs> You know, it's uh, it is a a big issue. You know, censorship in and of itself. There's censorship for secrecy. Secrecy is occulting information. Yes, it is uh, occult hidden. Uh, Jan Irvin uh, is our guest. I'm Alex Jones. The websites are infowars.com and prisonplanet.tv. We'll be right back on the other side. Long segment coming to get people to go back to classical education. You know, going back to the Greeks, the Romans, common sense. What made Western civilization great? That's not taught now. It's all about being a ninny, being obsessed with your, quote, sexual or racial identity, fighting with everyone around you, knowing all the mindless trivia of the different ball games and, and uh, you know, the latest trial on television, but not understanding how human cultures operate, not understanding history, not understanding. I mean, they've convinced the, the, the planet to a great extent that powerful people don't meet in secret and don't have agendas and aren't dangerous. Total common sense for all of civilization. Uh, they have taught people how to instinctively now engage in their own fallacies, their own delusions. It's creating a delusional society. I just put it uh, in, in, in layman's terms, of course, decades ago, I did, you know, read over some of the classical, uh, uh literature and, uh, thought processes, but it's all there self-evident. But what's good about what, uh, Jan's doing is he's technically bringing it back and, and showing people, uh, how it's being used against him now. So this is a long segment uh, Jan, I want to give you the floor now as if you're talking to a completely new audience. And I, I would imagine 90 percent of my audience on, you know, all these AM and FM stations have never heard of you. And, and they're intelligent folks. They know they're being lied to and manipulated. They know their neighbors uh, uh, just seem like they're complete idiots. I mean, they can sell insurance. They can be doctors. They can be lawyers. But still, they will giggle and laugh at common sense because they believe common sense is being a chump, not having uh, a large lexicon. The system is limiting words now, destroying words, changing well, their so meaning. That's the systematic method of dumbing us down. I know you interviewed uh, Charlotte Iserbeet last year. Uh, she wrote the book, uh, The Dumbing Down of America. Uh, you know, this is the, the key stuff that they're using. They want people to sit there and instead of writing laughing out loud, they go LOL, right? You know, or all of these other uh, abbreviations that people are using in text and everything else that is literally dumbing us down. It's like animal and, calls. And, so, so, right, so, so listen, I'm going to give you the floor, but, but, but okay. uh, explain the basics of it for a start over, go through it, uh, break down what television, all of it's doing to us. Well, television in and of itself, without a systematic method of seeing through the lies coming out to you, it's, it is, it's television programming, and that programming is programming you. It's not programming a, a machine. The machine is just a receiver, but the program is to program you. You're the one that can, in, that can take a program just like a computer can. But uh, what I want to do real quick is explain to people a little bit more clearly exactly what the trivium is. Okay, so I already said that the, the trivium is grammar, logic, and rhetoric. But the, triv the trivium or grammar... The grammar aspect of the trivium answers the question of who, what, where, and when of a subject. Diverting and ordering facts of reality compri uh, com comprises basic systematic knowledge. 
and not only the rules and development applied to the ordering of word com concepts for, for verbal expression and communication, but for our first contact with conscious order as such. And then logic answers the why of a subject, developing the faculty of reason in establishing valid, i.e. non-contradictory relationships among facts yields basic systematic understanding. So again, uh, grammar was knowledge, logic is understanding, and then rhetoric provides the how of a subject, and it applies knowledge and understanding expressively and, comp uh, and compri comprises wisdom. In other words, it is a systematically usable form of knowledge and understanding put together that you express to others. So let's say that you have a, a bunch of, let's say that you have a model airplane that you want to put together and you have all these parts lying around, okay? That's the grammar, the, all those parts lying around are the grammar. Grammar should not be understood as just words and letters and punctuation. Grammar should be understood as the, the items that make up reality, the trees, the cars, the parts, everything in front of you out in reality, your computer, your keyboard, your, the glass of water sitting in front of you. That's the grammar aspect of your reality. And so when, we, when we're looking at the, the parts of this model airplane, we say, okay, we have to have knowledge of these parts before we can put them together. Otherwise, we're not going to end up with a model airplane. We're going to end up with a lump of plastic or whatever it is. But by having knowledge first of those parts, then we remove the contradictions and we put those parts together. That forms language or that puts the model airplane together as a whole model airplane with, with the contradictions removed from it. And then when we go to someone else and express that to someone else, that is rhetoric or wisdom, okay? So if we take any of these things out of order, the entire system collapses. And this is what the elites use on the masses to control them. Uh, so, you know, even Albert Pike in Morals and Dogma in, on page, uh, I think it's uh, 866 or 869, uh, 861, excuse me, proclaims that the royal secret of the sublime prince is found in the understanding of the Pythagorean 5, 3, 4, right angle, triangle. The 5 represents the five senses, the 3 represents the trivium, grammar, logic, and rhetoric, and the 4 represents the quadrivium, which is math, geometry, music, and astronomy. And I should state that the quadrivium always has to be in that order. Math is number in itself, geometry is number in space, music or harmony is number in time, and astron astronomy is number in space and time. And in my own instance, when I was in junior high school, uh, they took the, the uh, geometry and they taught me algebra before geometry, which takes it out of order. You have to learn math, geometry, then uh, go on to algebra and, and uh, these you know, calculus, these other forms of mathematics. So they intentionally dumb us down and confuse us by taking these ancient systems out of order. The trivium and quadrivium, see the ancients figured out over 2,000 years ago, 2,500 years ago, exactly how the human mind works and processes information. The elitists have kept this information to themselves and that's how they control the masses. By them understanding who, what, where, and when, and understanding the logical fallacies, and what they'll do is they'll use, you know, appeal to belief, uh, they'll use circular, circular logic, appeal to fear, you know, and to, just to jab at you a little bit, Alex, I know a lot of uh, times you get criticized for using too much appeal to fear in your show. So by, by understanding how these appeal to fallacies are used and manipulated against us, we can take those out of our own thinking and then deliver a, a co coherent, directed uh, bit of information towards our audience that is going to empower them and enlighten them and give them the tools necessary uh, so that we can stop this insane madness that's going on in the world around us, this new world order. And folks, the new world order is very real. The perceptibilis or the Illuminati is real. And, uh, the, I, you know, in my personal opinion, I very strongly believe that the re religions themselves are also a part of the new world order. And the religions themselves get... Uh, uh, control people by their fear of sins in an afterlife rather than having to use direct physical force against you now. Well, I mean, I want to continue to give you the floor here because if I start, if I start, inter <laughs> All right. I, I mean, if I start interjecting questions, then you're not going to be able to really put these ideas out. And I know you're right. correct. Well, I mean, I've read the, the, you know, the classic literature. I, I know that that's why the globalist call themselves uh, the, uh, Occult, because that simply means hidden, 
And right. then it's all a big. Uh, well, see, the only the only the only way that they can control us is to hide information or to occult information, whether it's religious information, political information, or whatever. Whoever is occulting or has possession of that information and is not sharing it, they have power over that other person. So that is the whole trick. And education, in and of itself, is the unocculting of information. As I believe it was uh, John Johnson's dictionary in some somewhere around 1851 defined it. So. Uh, you know, it is the the occult people need to study the occult and unoccult it. It's it's having it occult that makes it a tool that can be used against you. And it's your fear of understanding that tool that enables it to be used against you. So when people fear the Kabbalah, when people fear the classical seven liberal arts, when people fear studying things, it, it works to their own detriment because this is how it is specifically used against them. Well, expanding now, on that, I mean, I certainly know that organized religion is used to control people. Now, uh, you know, individuals own spiritual journey, you know, that's just a window into the wider universe uh, and, you know, uh, the other dimensions. But there's no doubt it's being used. But uh, sure, well, you know, it's like it's like psychedelics, you know, psychedelics are just a tool. It's like a knife. Okay, you can stab somebody with a knife or you can cut your steak with it. It's not good or bad. But what happens is that, you know, these religions throughout history, shamanic cultures throughout history have used psychedelics for religious practices. But what happens is you get these elite groups that have the knowledge of the trivium and quadrivium and recognize that if they can shock people loose from other paradigms and then give them false information when they've been freed through the psychedelic experience, if they can take that moment when they're free and, and interject their yeah. own wrong information then they can control people so the trick is to give people you know before, my recommendation I don't speak against psychedelics at all my recommendation is that people study logic take a course in logic especially in the trivium and quadrivium before they use these things but what I want to do is I want to go into some of the logical fallacies real quick because you know we've only got 15 minutes left but what I want to do is give people the tools to begin to apply this stuff right away by the end of this interview so we already mentioned ad hominem attack, and uh, there's, there's a couple of different forms of ad hominem. There's a circ circumstantial ad hominem, which means like, uh, I own a bookstore, I'm promoting a certain new law in, in the county, and uh, you know somebody will come along and says, well, that person owns a bookstore, so therefore anything they say is invalid. That's a circumstantial ad hominem. There's appeal to emotion, which most people can figure out what that is, appeal to fear, appeal to flattery, your boss at work probably likes to use that. Well, not you, but you're the boss. But, uh, you know, those who go to work on Monday, they walk into the, the workplace and the boss says, you know, Jane, that's a mighty nice new dress that you have on today. And did you get your haircut? Well, you look like you're ready to do a fine job today. And so there's also appeal to novelty, appeal to pity, appeal to popularity. You know, Alex, if you do this, you're going to be popular with everyone. Or Alex, if you buy this new fancy car, you're going to have all the girls. Or if you drink this this beer uh, with all these pretty girls with blue eyes, Alex, you're going to have all the pretty girls around you or appeal to, to tradition, which is basically appeal to, uh, let's say, well, in our country, we've always had slavery. And so therefore, slavery is right. You know, that's an appeal to tra tra tradition or uh, we've always believed in Christianity and, and Christianity is this. That's an appeal to tra 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 excuse me, tradition. tradition. Um, begging the question is circular logic. It's, it's when somebody presents an argument, let's say I argue that some aspect of, let's say I claim that, that God wrote the Bible, okay? And then somebody comes along and says, well, how do you know that's true? And I say, well, it says so right here in the Bible. That in and of itself is begging the question. You're using the same source that you got that information from to back your source. So that's a logical fallacy in and of itself. Now, uh, you have to judge the Bible uh, off of the uh, information and are the things that it talked about. You know, and uh, logical fallacies as well. You've got to remember that, you know, the law. See, here's the thing. You know, the yeah, you're going to claim that's like a quadrain with Nostradamus and, and, and in the world there's always going to be similar things happening when people well, predict. There, it, it, see, there's there's things that we can go out into reality and recognize that are created from, if you want to call it God or Gaia or the Great Spirit, whatever you want to call it. So let's say we see a tree. We know that tree came came from the Great Spirit. Or we see a brick wall, or we see a computer, or a window, or a house. We know that these things 
things are what man created. We see a dog or a cat or a bird. We know that those are things that God created. Well, do, do books come from gods or do they come from man? So if we use simple common logic, we can identify that the Bible is a book and books are created by men. It's really simple logic when we put it this yeah, well, way. I, I'm not trying to argue with you about that because I think, I think it's important to spur thought and to get people outside the box. But specifically, uh, well, the, 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 the main continuum of Christianity says the Bible is inspired by God. So, so it's not, uh, people aren't saying that God uh, physically sat down with well, a quill. The, the typical interpretation is that the Bible is the official word of God, uh, uncorrupted. So, uh, you know, but many men, in fact, you had, you know. The, but let me the, raise this point, uh, I mean, to you, because, again, there's always I, I, complex. I don't, really well, want I, mean, no, I, I, don't, I, I don't want to get off into a debate about this. My, my only issue um, uh, here is that I see the system attacking, not organized Christianity, but but attacking actually you know what Christ taught and so when I see the system attacking something and it is good to do unto others as you'd have them do unto you and things like that then that makes me wonder because there's this giant universe there's, there's of no, things to talk no. about and I wonder why people always obsess on Christianity. I mean, if it's such hogwash. Well, you can get into Zionism or any of these different uh, subjects as well. So we have to be careful with all of these things, really. But the, really, the thing is, is to not get caught up into your emotions and to look at these things in an analytical fashion so that you can come to a a systematic a method of driving certainty and not use your emotions or anything else getting caught up in there. No, no, I understand. So, I want to... So I, I want to pull back here for just a moment, and, and we'll keep you a little bit in the next hour so you have more time if you can do it before I get to uh, some sure. other news here. But but j just watching what the social engineers are doing, it, 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 it's clear now that they're trying to overly lie and, and, and basically just train us to accept total la-la land and that there's a real attempt right now to more than ever blur uh, reality uh, you know, from fiction, uh, A, do you agree with that statement? And B, what is the method to the social engineer's madness? You're asking me? Yeah, I mean, I'm asking, I mean, I'm, I'm asking, do you agree that they're really turning up the heat right now? Oh, yeah. Well, see, right now they're in a panic because people are waking up and they're figuring out how the whole system works. So they're trying to put as much pressure on us as possible. They're trying to keep, you know, all the, the rats inside the Skinner box and all of the rats are starting to break loose and going, you know, forget this whole Skinner box thing. I don't want to be in the Skinner box. I don't want to be your, your little uh, rat for your mind control gimmick and now, see that's why i wanted profits. to get you on i wanted to get you on about mind control about tv about the rat right, well, studies and, and the trivium the trivia and all of this stuff that we're going into is how is the core foundation of how they use mind control so that's why i need to cover that information first no no i understand uh, that, that, that that people aren't being given basic building blocks of of thought discernment reality testing i understand so uh, how about you stay 50 or like 10 minutes with us into the next hour it's only a few sure, short you know, segments if you want to go in if you want to go longer than that too but what we have to well, realize is that fallacies are errors in thinking and and that is the first thing that we have to deal with yes i understand that uh, because from that uh, you know, uh, stems other deceptions once you've been taught how to just accept things uh, that you're told because the person's wearing a nice suit and is on television, then the sky's the limit. People have got to be more skeptical. Instead of a liberal education, what they're giving people today is a servile or a servitude education to get people to be good factory workers, good soldiers, not think critically, not question what you're told. Just follow along, be spoon-fed the information that you're fed by the uh, mainstream media. And by the way, you're not just your saying head. that. We have the Department of Education documents and others. We have the, the stuff from Germany going back over 100 years ago where they said they would do this. It's called kindergarten, folks. Not critical thinking, but regurgitating. We'll be right back. Jan, yep. uh, I mean, let's say you had three minutes on national television to talk to the sheep. What would you say? You know, you're in a false reality. You've been programmed. The words you're using aren't real. Break out of your trance. I mean, I found that because they don't have the rhetoric, they don't have the basic classical education, they don't have any of this stuff, that, 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 that it, it's like telling somebody to swim who's never even been in the, in, 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 in the baby pool. I just say, hey, right. you well, better you look know, around you.
eventually people have to take the first step and hold the rail and step into the baby pool, right? And uh, that's the first step to learning how to swim. You know, you have to, you have to get wet. And uh, so people have to pick up the books. They have to start learning this stuff or we're all going to continue to be slaves. The broken trivium equals mind control. The fixed trivium equals liberation. So it's really up to, you know, the audience out there to, uh, to break free of these systems of mind control and figure out how they work and to get educated. It's very important that we fix our education, that we study Charlotte Iserbeet, John Taylor Gatto, and these people that are, that are giving us the real tools about the education system and how it's been corrupted, as well as uh, Brett Vinat's School Sucks podcast out there. That is a, uh, a top-notch publication, and the, the, the education system in and of itself is the core foundation of the mind control with the trivium and quadrivium in that, and then everything stems from there. The political system, the, the PR, the marketing companies, uh, none of that stuff would work. You wouldn't have commercials for, for, for that matter, Alex. Maybe this is against your own uh, self-interest. But if people had the trivium and quadrivium, you wouldn't have commercials the way they are right now with all of... You know, if you sit there and listen through an average 30-second commercial, most commercials will run the full gambit of logical fallacies in that short time. Yeah, well, th that's my point is, though, we have lived in this system so long that... Most people writing commercials aren't even aware of it. It, it, it. It's just the culture of communication. That's why any sponsors I promote, it's something I use and I endorse. He has really gone fast. Love to have him up again and take calls for those of you that uh, may disagree with anything he's saying. Uh, but uh, when I have you back next time, I understand you wanted to cover some of the basics, but people can always find that at your sites. Right. Uh, Jan. Uh, I mean, I mean, I've done the research you've done, and, and I know you've done some research I haven't, so I wanted you to expand out just into the rat mazes, the social conditioning, uh, all the things that are going on. You know, the government documents and corporate documents where this is admitted. I mean, they admit they're manipulating people, and they cold-bloodedly are doing it. So if you could just show folks that, I think at the end of the day, to get people thinking and really challenging their beliefs – and becoming aware and not just kind of passively in a trance going through life, I think that's really the most important thing. But uh, talk about television a little bit. Talk about the rat mazes uh, that are then you know directly moved to the shopping centers. Well, B.F. Skinner was the first one getting uh, rats and pigeons to respond to stimulus basically by starving them. And uh, so by, by withholding about a third of these pigeons' food, they could uh, get the pigeons to react to different letters almost like they were reading and then peck on a box or open a door or something like that. And so That's why they destroy uh, economies whenever they're about to make big social exactly, changes that exactly. are unpopular. You're exactly right. So they're, the bird and the rat's food is our money, right? And that's exactly how they're doing this. Uh, Aldous Huxley said, a really, diff a really efficient totalis <laughs> excuse me, totalitarian state would be one in which the all-powerful executive of political bosses and their army of managers control a population of slaves who do not have to be coerced because they love their servitude. To make them love it is the task assigned in present-day totalitarian states to minister of propaganda, newspaper editors, school teachers. The greatest triumphs of propaganda have been accomplished, not by doing something, but by refraining from doing. Truth is, wait, great is truth, but, but still greater from a, from a practical point of view is silence about truth. And so it's people not taking action, not getting up and finding out what these logical fallacies are, not learning. You know, as soon as you study, if you go on the TriviumEducation.com website and study the logical fallacies on there for 20 minutes and then go watch corporate media, you'll be able to start spotting those logical fallacies right away. It is immediate that you can begin applying these and things. And what's happening is we're set in front of the television in our diapers from birth and we're literally taught this. It's the ether we swim in. Uh, until the entire culture becomes delusional. And what I'm seeing is that the ruling class themselves uh, have been infected by their own propaganda, by blowback, and they, they, are. Are, they are now addled and pathetic.
Exactly. And not only that, but they've started by accident somewhere along the line. They've started giving their own a bastardized form of the trivium. It's out of order on their own because you can tell because they're irrational thinkers now. They think that they have all of the solutions and all of the data, but uh, it's clear that they haven't been doing their data gathering or their grammar. grammar. So, uh, you know, it's, it's very important that... Well, uh, they have the Google NSA spy grid where they want... Uh, the uh, data, you know, that, you know, that first level, uh, but then they're obviously not using the information they're getting. I mean, take all the open air genetic engineering, which all their own studies show could r really hurt the planet. They're not worried about that. We're not even having a debate about that. Oh, well, even chemtrails, you know, and all this stuff that I see them spraying, and I know a lot of people argue against No, they're nihilistic. Cameras. It's going on. That's what oh, yeah. I'm saying is that is that they're a bunch of spoiled brats who are sabotaging themselves and us. They want to tax carbon that plants use to live, but then they want to allow just all this other craziness that we know from their own data is deadly. Right. Exactly. You know, and uh, what they've done really is they've uh, created a, a society of soulless people through the education system and dumbing us down through this this whole Skinner's box sort of mentality and the and the Woundian uh, PhD system. We're going to talk created. about that next time, uh, Jan right, well, Urban. Let's, let's, let me throw out my podcast information. Oh, wait, I think we quick. did it about five times. We're just out of time. I appreciate you coming on with us. Try to fire it out right now. Go ahead. All right, we're just out of time.